I felt like I had no hope, like I couldn't get out of this. I was kind of mad at God, just I felt trapped. I kind of felt a little bit betrayed. I knew that uh, there was more, I needed more. If you're God, you know, where are you in all of this? I just felt like this, like, tug. This tug of like, you know, are you really happy? Are you really happy with your choices? Maybe for the moment. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, so empty. My name's Aileen. When I was nine, went to camp and had told a few people about what was going on in my home. And when I got back from camp, DCFS had pulled up behind our car and uh, took me into, into the system. Went into a home for about four days and then bounced around a little bit. Well, my name is Josh Johnson. Around sophomore year, I would always have like really bad grades and uh, just to like get away from the trouble I was getting into and like my parents getting on me about that kind of stuff, I would always just go out and just go to parties or just do different drugs and just like numb the pain and get away from this, that horrible feeling of failure. I felt unwanted. I felt like I had nothing to offer. And being a foster kid, it was hard because you were always this is my foster kid. It's not like this is my daughter. I felt like like an outcast. My name is Gary Lane, and uh, I grew up in church, around church, well, pretty much all my life. Went, went, went through a divorce, and when, when you go through a divorce, it seems like it's, you know, it's the loneliest feeling. You feel like you're just, there, you know, people are like, I'm sorry for you or whatever, but it seems more to me like, well, you know, like, like it was contagious or something, like, you know, you better not get too close to him because you'll catch it, you know? I just kind of pretty much fell away, you know, but raised children, you know, it was, just, it was just hard. You know, you put God on the back burner, you know? I started to realize that this lifestyle wasn't what I necessarily wanted. Like, I was starting to think more into the future. I needed to kill this thing. I needed to get it away from it. I need to just stop doing what I'm doing so I can move on. Like, I felt like I was, like, stuck in a rut that I couldn't get out of. So after foster care, I had moved in with my boyfriend at the time. I was just trying to find love and trying to find acceptance and some trying to find somebody that wanted me, and not just temporarily, but, you know, forever. When I was 20, I got pregnant, got married at seven months, wanted to do the right thing. A year later, I got divorced, moved out on my own. I got pregnant again, and... I thought, what am I gonna do? Single mom, two kids, no family. What I felt at the time was best, I didn't keep the baby. My sister told me about this post uh, high school program here at the church. I signed up for it. I started going there and everything was great. Like I started getting closer to God, actually having like a relationship with him. Temptation came and uh, I was thinking in my head like one last time, like I'll just do it one more time, get it out of my system, I'll be done. And then after that, like it just one time became two and then three and then four. A few days or so go by and then I get, I get called down to like the main office. I got kicked out of the program. I don't know what to do now. I don't know where to go. I don't know, like I thought this was my way out. I guess I'm just stuck in this. You know, to make it work, I wanted to rededicate my life, and you know, whatever it was spiritually, I, you know, I wasn't there, and I just, you know, asked God to come back in and you know, forgive me for all the bad that I've that I've ever done, and you know, it's not like I have to make up anything, you know, or pay him back because you know, he's just, he's always there. He was so faithful, and you know, he's brought me to this point now, and you know, I just, I just want to serve him. I love him. I started coming to church. You know, I was still kind of one foot in, one foot out. It wasn't like like a moment of, bam, I'm just going to make all the right choices. It was like a spiraling effect of m me just knowing that, that God wanted the best for me. And the only way that I was going to be able to do that was to give up my old life. And it was like, you may be giving all of this up, but you're going to gain so much more. 
the next Sunday that came up, um, the lead pastor was preaching on God's love and how it like never ends and it's always there for you. It was it was exactly what I needed to hear because it like it just like felt like God just sat me down and said, you know what, I, I love you and I'm not giving up on you. You're not some project that I'm just gonna throw away. Like I'm in it for like the long haul here. I just immediately just like joy. I just felt so good, and uh, ever since then, so that was uh, like in February. I've been I've been sober. When you're in the dark, and when, you know when you're going through things, and you think you're going by yourself, or I, you know I've got to clean myself up to come to God, and you know that's just not the situation because I, I was stumbling around in the dark and trying to make it work myself, and God truly did change my life, and and um, God truly is the light of the world. You know, for the longest time I was walking in darkness. Now I'm walking with God and uh, I have a purpose and hope. Then when I really gave my life to God, not just went to church, but just really was a Christ follower, I don't feel empty. I feel loved, truly loved, because now I understand and know how much God loves me.